So continuing on with reformer exercises, just trying to take a little bit more time than you sometimes get in a class. Today we're looking at the short box series. And I'm going to give you five of the exercises, um, not all variations, but some variations on those five. This is a common piece that comes into the very basic classes um, of reformer and, and certainly carries on through the more advanced classes. So I've got Meredith here. And you, we can look at this exercise or this series in a lot of different ways. We can look at it as really preparing the spine even more um, to go in all different directions. You're going to have some flexion, some extension, rotation, and then a whole lot of stretching going on in between that, depending on what levels you go to. So I'm just going to start walking you through the basics. Um, if you were to say muscularly, what are you really focused on? It varies piece by piece, but this first one and really all of them, I can say powerhouse, and I do mean from shoulder to shoulder, hip to hip, abdominals, back. But if you don't kick in the hamstrings and the rest of the body, it, 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 it's much harder and not quite as effective. So walking you through, we're using a balanced body reformer. Um, I've got Meredith under the foot strap here that comes with it, and the springs are locked down. It's just so that the carriage doesn't move. Um, the height of a box can vary, and, and I'll show you two different ways on this on how to do it, but traditionally your legs are going to be straight for all of these exercises. Um, the first one we're looking at is the round back. So if I'm going to have um, Meredith go two different arm positions. The first one, just to show you better, will go arm over arm, forearm. And what she's doing here is pressing the top arm into the bottom arm and creating a little bit of resistance there. I'm going to actually have you push your elbows down a little bit and lift up through the chest even more. So there she is, she's all tall, ready to go. Her legs are extended and slightly apart, kind of pulling on the straps. Okay? As far as the, the box is concerned, um, depending on which one you're using, it's either going to be over the shoulder rest or just in front of it. We know that we have it um, in front because we've measured out what works best for Meredith. That's what you should do for yourself too. All right, so from here, just going through the mechanics of round back, making kind of a, a point of it, we're going to inhale. On the exhale, she's going to draw her belly back and start to roll back. We won't go all the way, but we'll go pretty far. Okay, and let the arms just drop a little. I'm going to stop her there. She could keep going, but we're not going to. Inhale, she's going to use her legs. She's reaching long, and exhale, she stay, stays curved until she's over her shoulders, and in this version, I'll just have her straighten up. I'm just giving you that sense of what's going to happen with the spine. As she rolls back, it's as if she sends energy through her feet, rounding back. She could go further if she wanted to. Inhale, and exhale. Keep the curve. That's the hard part. If you let go of the legs there, you're going to end up arching, and then straighten up. For a slightly different variation and a little more classical, we'll take arm over arm at the hip bones. So now we're going to start rounded. Right? She's reaching through her legs still. She's rounded. She's got her back nice and open. And it's the same action. She's going to unfurl her spine, rounding back. If you feel comfortable to go further, she can go all the way, getting that extension too, then chin toward chest. She rounds, stays curved the whole time. She'll inhale, squeeze the glutes, and get up off her seat to exhale and roll back again. So it's this unfurling of the spine, going only as far as you want, but ultimately all the way, and rounding up. That one's a little flatter for you. Can we do just one more, but we won't go all the way. I just want to get that up part coming round back. Good, good, good. And here's the real key, whether you go all the way or not, is that you keep the curve as you come forward. So that's the round back. Go ahead and rest for a moment. Really focused on the center. Take your time with it. I'm going to show you a variation that works for I think all of them in a moment, but we'll move on to the tilt. I'm sorry, the flat back. So reach under and just grab the bar. And this one, um, we're taking the bar about shoulder height, uh, shoulder distance apart. Separate them a tiny bit more, actually. Yeah. And she's really got her shoulders reaching down into her back. Her back is straight. I'm actually going to have you think of pushing the heels forward and slightly curving your back. Just a little, just a little. And now, not quite so much, right there. From here, she's going to stay like that. She just inhales to hinge back. That's far enough. Keeps it flat as she exhales and comes forward. You can go slightly in front of the hip bones. She recontracts the glutes, pushes through, inhaling back. Notice how strong and straight she is in exhale. And that's really far. You don't have to go that far as you're getting used to it. Again, inhale. Yeah, even there. And then just exhaling one more time. Now we're really strengthening those back extensions 
in conjunction with the abs, just rest the arms. The question may come of why I even do these exercises, but this one is so obvious to me. When, when you're working the spine in a way that's it's stable, right? We're looking for stable and stability in all of our exercises, but think of all those exercises we do, like the plank, like the push-up, um, even teaser and all sorts of things where you really need to be able to engage the abdominals, but also maintain some work through the back extensors in order to remain safe. So if we could just do two more repetitions. Uh, flat back, just to kind of have that in our minds. And she's just inhaling. It doesn't have to be far, but she's in charge of exactly what's happening with her spine the whole time. Really key. One more time. Oh, nice little adjustment. Let's move on to the next one. It's the tilt. So I'm going to have you lean forward ever so slightly. It starts the same otherwise. She's going to do a subtle rotation to me as she reaches out. And what she's trying to do is maintain this opposite hip down. It's not real big, exhaling center. She'll slightly rotate the other way, reaching that long, semi-rotated spine and back to center. Good. And inhale, reaching. And she's really stretched out. She can even add a subtle arc. Yeah, really getting a side stretch on that one, the opposite side. Right. And inhale, up and over. A lot of times the arms are in the air. Well, one of the reasons I like the arms, if you'll do two more, is because you can kind of measure where you are. Try not to let the arms get out ahead of you, right? They're just measuring where you are in space. If that's too much, and come back to center, you can also do it with all of these with the hands behind the head if you didn't have a pole. You do just two more, just pull the ribs back a little. You're almost, there we go. She's inhaling. This is also a great way. It's, I find it even harder to cheat, but it's sometimes hard to tell exactly where you are in space. So that's the tilt. Okay, the next one, we'll just keep your arms like that, but you could use a pole as well in the same upright position. It's the twist. So she's going to start by inhaling and rotating. She's going to lean way out, sort of a combination of the flat back. She exhales to come up in the rotation and back to center. Inhale to rotate, hinging back. And the opening is happening here at the hip. And she, again, she's going very far. You don't even have to demo that far. <laughs> she's into it. Inhale. But this is perfect right here. It's still big and long, right? She's not arching to get further back. She's not looking down at the floor and rounding. She's maintaining it. It's beautiful. Really pretty. And up. And that's the twist. So stay there. Rest, or rest your arms. So that's another one of those pieces, right? We have to be able to twist our spines. That's what we do in real life, right? So it, the more we can do that with the support and the stability and the anticipation from our brain to our body, the better. So that's what, we, what we've done. The round back, flat back, tilt, and twist already. Great. Time for climetry. All right. I'm going to teach you um, the version that I learned, Meredith learned, and then we'll show you the more common version. So um, except for the straight leg, yeah. Okay, so she's got her left leg in. She's sitting tall, and one of the things we like to think about is the back extensors because of the tendency to round back. So what she's going to do is exhale and just draw the leg toward her chest three times, but also growing taller. Three, she maintains the length of her spine and stretches it up. From here, she's going to roll back until the tree, this is called climb a tree, that's great, stays about 90 degrees. She walks down the tree, one, two, Three, she goes into extension, either holding the leg or the box. She inhales and starts to walk back up, leaving the tree in place. She sits back up, trying to leave the leg nice and high. There's her inhale and start again. Exhale, pump three, two, one. Maintaining as much of the long back. There's her inhale. She starts to rock it back and exhales to walk down into the wall. You're rounding down into it. Extend, yep. Then curl the head up, walk up, and you, you, you can use the arms, but not a lot. Use the sense of your trunk bringing you up. Sit tall again, and we'll try the other leg, just a couple. For this one, I'll, I'm going to show you just the other version that's also common, and that's where you're going to extend the leg three times, and then we'll stay up. So now, this time, instead of holding on top, Meredith is going to hold underneath, and this is the more traditional way to do it, is to kick the leg three times. One, down, kick two, kind of loosening up, hold it up on three, Nice and high. She's going to come toward her leg on this one. And now take the whole thing back. She's reaching with the opposite hip. The rest is the same. Take it down. You can still leave it up there at 90. Good. And up she comes. Notice she's, and she's, she can let the leg come forward, but she's holding it as high as she can. Go ahead and stretch way forward this time. Yep. Then we just go again. Rock back. So you're bringing it closer to you every time. Walk down. One, two, three. Ex in, and you're welcome to hold the box there, right? Or the leg. And up one and two. She climbs, and each time she's going to get a little closer. 
and that's the two to match that. So that's climate tree. So all of those, there's going to be different variations. Um, I want to show you one option because not all of those are accessible to everyone. And I actually love this version for myself. So if you take my class, this is how I'm going to do it. Traditionally, we do the straight legs. And, and that's great, and I'll do that too. But I, I know that this exercise is done more effectively if I can draw into the hamstrings of the back of the body too. And that's hard for me. So what I do is I, I would have my box the same way as Mary has it, scooting way forward to the front edge to where the knees can be bent, okay? And, and now they're together, right? So her legs are together, the strap is quite snug, and her feet are just on the bar. So that she's not gonna try to lift them up. If anything, she's gonna try to engage the hamstrings by, not, uh, by almost drawing the heels towards her glutes. It's just very subtle, but that awareness is easier here. Let's just go do that first one again. Yeah, she's going to inhale and we'll all go back, not all the way, but exhale to roll back. This is the round back, the first one. So right here, again, remember she could go all the way, but she has the sense of being able to draw her heels towards her boot, glutes, but that allows the front of the body to kind of not overwork. It's a really nice thing to try and go ahead and sit up. Let's do one more. Exhale, so even now there's a subtle sense of push into the bar to get the back of the body working. That's fine, inhale. Now she can gently think of drawing the heels towards her and it just frees up the overworking of the hip flexors and then rest. And that, that's a great tip on all of them, I think. Even climate tree, that works really well. Um, it's a fun series, it happens to be one of my favorite, I think it is my favorite series, and I hope that you'll try it, not be afraid of it, not feel like you have to do the full range, and um, see, you know, how it fits into the rest of the exercises, because it really does. It's a great exercise, and that's why we start you with it right away in class, the short box series.